Hi everyone, I'm Kyohei, a software engineer and I usually develop a library called Commu which allows you to introduce video chats into your web application without any hassles. And meanwhile, I also run the coding bootcamp in Tokyo. Feel free to contact on Twitter if interested. Today, I'll give, I'll give a talk about how well Svet supports web components and what it looks like to have it running in production. Before explaining why we adapted Svet and web components, I need to share the context we did so. We are developing a library called Commu. It provides web RTC based video chats. It, it was started as an ordinary class library and wraps around really well the complexity web RTC introduces. But besides, video chats also inevitably have to interact with users visually, so users need to sort out the mess of the DOM and the events. To avoid it, we, we wanted to provide the UI helper which, uh, which, users, which, which users can just load and price it and place it and configure some, then damn. We are, we are using Svelte heavily for uh, UI development in contract works and the internal tools, but to use it in this way, meaning for library development, Svelte's relatively smaller share would be problematic since projects using React or Vue would not be, uh, would not be able to use the half of our library. Luckily, Svelte supports a web component, so we decided to provide these UI parts of the library using web components. For those unfamiliar to uh, web components, I'll put a brief summary. It is a web standard which allows JS to define a kind of elements, simply put, tag, you know. I guess you haven't seen the tags called clipboard copy uh, in, in HTML ever. They are built with web components. This provides a functionality to copy something into your clipboard and which you don't have to care the, uh, how it works since it's, it's done inside. You can try this on GitHub's repository. Yeah, yes, actually GitHub is uh, known as a heavy user of the web components. Web components are called technically uh, custom elements. Custom elements can provide functionalities roughly corresponding to uh, components in Svelte. Let's take a look how it can be in place of Svelte components. Uh, attributes, you know, uh, as you know in HTML, uh, it, they can be used as a props. Actually, when we build the Svelte components into custom elements, props with it uh, will be translated to attributes. When it comes to think about props, there's another important property, uh, reactivity. Unlike source code in Svelte, we cannot put dynamic variable in raw HTML document. There's just a literal string, literal string which doesn't change code attribute value. If you need to change it, you need to do it with JS, but once you can set it through the DOM API, I mean, sub substituting uh, the value, Svelte reactivity, which is built into the custom elements, takes care of and it keeps in sync all over the inside inside the elements. As events, also the interesting parts of the Svelte components. A Svelte component can emit events which would be listened by hundreds passed through corresponding props, namely like on column click. Then also have event mechanism which of course Svelte 1 comes from. Custom elements can emit DOM elements, uh, emit DOM events, and it works almost the same manner to events emitted from Svelte components. And lastly, Svelte components have di bidirectional data binding, which there's no counterpart in custom elements. 
So how do you know when some state in a uh, custom element has been changed? We can we can use custom DOM events for that. Similar to that, you can listen an event in a DOM element, namely on click. You can listen non-standard event non-standard events emitted by the uh, custom element. You can update a variable on the page when a props and uh, it's, it's logically bound to the variable uh, has been changed inside the custom elements. Of course, you can do anything other than updating the variable. It is actually more than that by far. But it would be safer to consider it to it is similar to the bidirectional data binding. In Svelte, you can mark your components to compile into those custom elements with just adding a special tag like this uh, setting your module bundler, which is just a one-liner, if you're using a, uh, if you're using rollup. Custom elements are uh, under the food uh, invocations of custom element registry APIs. Your bundle will also you to write a tag, technically again, a custom element, and it seems to you it's like Svelte mounts uh, your component in place of the tag. They can be working fine even if side by side with React component as long as correctly loaded, or even if in project with no front end library. So let's take a look how it's working in production. I'd like to show you our commune library as an example of web component SDK and I provide a demo, like a hands on, to create simple custom elements with Svelte. You can try it as a hands on. In a way, we'll hit the pitfall in the current state of its best web component supports, with workarounds for every one of them, which is the actual highlight of this session. I'll show you a little bit how easy it is to build a video chat with commu, commu library with the, its web component SDK. This is really this is it. Before digging into a little into it, let's see how it looks like. I mean, I'll pull. Okay, let's recording. Click start. Oh, click start coding. It is it. This is written in uh, start coding or join meeting in Japanese and click this button and waiting. Oh. Hello, how are you? How are you? Yeah, uh, pretty fine. And I'm in Svelte Summit. Bye. Bye. Yeah, happy it's working fine. And uh, okay, turning back to the slide. Okay, what? What you have seen is a uh, video chat uh, built, uh, built with the Comu, Comu's uh, web component SDK. It's just a loading a uh, bundle like this and I put the tag you must not be used to in a normal HTML. You can see two parameters passed as the attributes. The former is the API key, a completely static string. And uh, while the latter default sometimes because different users may want to use different room. In our example, we are okay if everyone on the page joins the same room, but in the more realistic use case, uh, users will want to meet a specific group of other people. You can implement by you can implement this by setting elements room name dynamically like this. Yeah. And if you put an input field for users to type some keyword and retrieve and pass it into the element, it allows you allows users to meet each other, only those who know the keyword. What is interesting in the in this way is you can use these components as a Svelte components as well, with or within other Svelte components. So you can develop effectively as in Svelte while providing uh, in, an inter interoperable custom el elements for library users. And yeah, let's try building a small custom elements. As usual, we can start by fetching the boilerplate and uh, converting to converting it to T TypeScript. 
To enable Svelte web component support, add a line to roll up config.js to plugin. Uh, to plugin Svelte compiler options custom elements to true. And note that uh, this, this enables all over the code base. There's no granular control like module wise. And all the components must have this special tag. This will be the tag name for the custom elements. So um, we'll try implement three major functionality of Svelte components like props, reactivity, and date by data binding. Okay. Let's get started by adding a special tag to our app Svelte. It has a simple, simple greeting already, but we want something more happier to make it say happy birthday. And, and that's it. This produces a bundle that defines set custom elements. But to see how it's work, to see how it's working, we need to do a little more work. Open the main TS, which mounts app component to the entire body of the page. Let's remove it since we don't rely on it anymore. So this file will contain just a, uh, in, an important sta uh, an import statement, an index HTML in public directory, put our custom elements with an attributes like this. You can use you know, whatever you like uh, as a, this name value. And start with npm run dev and open the local host uh, on port 5000. It will show the name passed through the prop. It's working. Yeah. Another important trait of Svelte components is reactivity. Of course, a HTML document is a static, so I cannot change the attribute value literally. But you know, sure, I can do it using JS. So, in index J, uh, in index HTML, put a button here, and when clicked, first get your custom elements and change the attributes it will change reactivity uh, <clears throat> it will change reactively event driven feature in web components called lifecycle callbacks in, in is leveraged under the hood svelte automatically uh, translates props into the lines of js exploiting life lifecycle callbacks but we don't have to care of it not so much it's elegantly supported by svelte but the final one we want to try is not so elegant because there's no direct counterpart of data binding in DOM world. So we need to find other way around to achieve, sa achieve the same objective. Most intuitive and DOM friendly strategy will be to use custom events. Library users who are familiar with DOM programming want to be surprised by the library says like, hey users, to get this value on timely manner, you need to listen to these events doesn't surprise you, that sounds very usual. In a Svelte component, emitting custom events is relatively easy. You can just use create event dispatcher from Svelte package. If you emit name change event like this, you can listen it with passing a handler to on column name change props. Ideally, you want this to emit DOM custom elements as well, to which can be listened with other as event listener to uh, or like that, but it doesn't. To do it, you need to use insert method uh, inside the component uh, called dispatch event inside the component class and pass it to a custom instance. Combined, you'd like to have a helper function like this to make components to emit custom events correctly whenever it is oh for for whichever you used as a whichever as a Svelte component as a custom custom element. And let's listen listen this event. We can use other event listener as usual. One point to note is you have to use when defined method to wait until the custom elements being available. Otherwise get elements by tag name returns undefined, which prevents us to call um, as event listener on it. Okay, turn in this way. Let's see how, how it works. I have written, uh, I have I have the complete code for this thing and just have an uh, npm run dev and open the browser. Actually, I have already opened this. 
Yeah, and then, uh, initially it has a. It's saying uh, uh, happy. It's saying happy birthday to uh, to the one I I set to the uh, attributes value, and when click the button inside the web uh, custom elements, it changed the value and the uh, occurs the event. Then it's show. By this, we can show the, this alert uh, to show the another person's name. And the uh, happy birthday is to Ciro Masamune. It's very good. Yeah. New guest celebrated here. Okay, that's cool. Let's go back to the slide. Okay, it looks easy on hindsight, but I had to struggle with this and found the workaround, workarounds. Actually, there's more rough edges in web, web, com web component supports, but I could get through this because of the warm and active community of Svelte. I'm relatively read-only member of the community, but in the future, I'd like to contribute at least some, and hope things like this session help someone. And later this session, I'll look through these pitfalls and work around for them and how community helps. But for now, I'd like to congratulate us because we have those three major functionality in our uh, custom elements. Let's forget the implementation we hustled and look at it from the library user's perspective. It looks uh, very similar to ordinary HTML tags and elementary JavaScript. That's the point. When you build a library that involves UI parts, it would be nice if you give it a constraint to have it as a custom element. So then, Let's walk through some some of the pitfalls I've encountered uh, I've encountered in a way uh, where we build commit. Firstly, in HTML, most of the attributes are named in kebab case, was in a lower alphabet combined with hyphens. In contrast, Svets props are described as a set of uh, declaration of JS variables whose name cannot include uh, hyphens inside. A naive workaround for this would be use this dollar dollar props helper to access the props like this in pre this situation. But this works only in the case you use the custom elements in HTML directory. It is okay for the end users of the library and end users of the custom elements uh, since they would, uh, they would use it in that way, but it is problematic for developers of the components. If you mount it as a svelte well component, all props should be undefined at the moment the component has been initialized unintentionally. Another workaround which allows you to do this is to have a wrapper class to intercept uh, behavior of the svelte. Secondary and similarly, you cannot use an uppercase letter in the name of attributes if, a com if the component is mounted as a custom element. Actually, it doesn't fail at the compile time, but the bar value will end up being undefined. For instance, even you specify like this, this kind, this uh, data ATTR with uh, uppercase A, um, the value uh, will, will be end up being undefined. And uh, in this case, it will be converted to a lowercase version like your name, or no, data ATTR. It seems to be browser that converts names to comply the naming co naming convention explained above, uh, rather than problem of uh, Svelte's web component support. Since camera case is default standard way of naming in JavaScript, naming a flop like your name with uppercase N as a user will result undefined. In this case, changing prop name to contain just a lowercase letter um, fix and make it work. Interestingly, the attributes name on Coralsize doesn't matter how many uh, uppercase letter it contains. Because, um, so this this three this three variation of uh, attributes name would uh, would work at all. But of course, very confusing. Don't do it. So far, we have walked through how web components development and Svelte looks like. Let's have a little recap. Finally, 
Uh, firstly, we learned the web components gives us a way to provide encapsulated components to vanilla JS. If you are building a library and want to provide a bunch of visual items on web page, and then you can leverage web components. Of course, most smooth way to do this would be by providing a component in one of the front-end library, namely React or Vue. But of course, not every project adopts some of uh, one of them. And if you provide view components, no one from React project cannot adapt. Once you compile, once you compile components into custom elements, even vanilla JS project can adopt them easily without sacrificing step, sacrificing development velocity a lot. Since you can work on Swift code base as well. Secondly, I've shared how we can build custom elements with functional parity to uh, Swift components say, props, reactivity, and date binding. Surely, it's not completely equal from the perspective of the library users because DOM works on fundamentally different paradigm on Svelte, but can reduce complete, uh, complexity enough for some extent. It can provide a good abstraction layer to UI library has to have with it. What I picked up to show you lastly was some pitfalls and best practices for you when you develop custom elements with with Svelte. It's not complete support indeed, but how? Uh, but there's a there's a warm and great community that help you a lot. Uh, in some cases, um, I had to read through the piece of code from Svelte compiler and uh, write. It may sound annoying you annoying to you, but they are not so massive and but concise and insightful. It should be great experience for you to improve your understanding on recent JS ecosystem and tool chains. Share your insights should you uh, find this interesting and try yourself. And uh, lastly, uh, shamelessly plug, I've just released a commu, a library. You can build a video chat into your web components. Oh no, a video chat into your web app without hassle. We provide, uh, provide it as a TypeScript SDK and Web Components SDK as well. As mentioned uh, throughout this session, we develop the Web Components, web components part with Svelte. If you are interested in, we are open to share the code, let's share insights with uh, development in Svelte. And the commu has just been available on various no-code platforms like Bubble or uh, Webflow. If you find it interesting or know someone who would like it, feel free to refer me to them. And thank you for watching this session at this very end. Follow me on Twitter, uh, GitHub, or Dev2. I'm at TNZK. Uh, my, my username is at um, TNZK, or in all of them. Uh, in a Dev2, uh, you can find the code uh, in this slide and more pitfalls. Happy hacking short uh, happy hacking against bad bye